They look like I got into a fight. It looks worse on the camera as it does in person. Oh, great. Even better. So. <laughs> We're headed to a French doctor. Outremer week. How? We had no idea what was involved. <laughs> The side half of the of the hull, one on each side, is glued with a soft connection, which is a Sika Flex. So the interior is floating in a way. Yeah, exactly. In suspension. Yeah, we realize. That. We're in uh, Le Grand Mont. So if you don't know, Le Grand Mont is where Outremer is built, yeah. where they are based. And when we were at the Cannes International Yachting Festival, hanging out, talking to Outremer, they invited us to come down for. Outremer week. As it turns out, Outremer are fans of the O'Kellys. They brought a copy of my book to dinner. So now you have to write something. Oh my, oh my god. god, this is hilarious. When will the French version be released? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Outremer told us that their goals go beyond making nice boats. They want successful projects. So I good for a drink. <laughs> And they, like us, recognize that success hinges on teamwork. And that's the foundational idea behind my book, Get Her On Board. Outremer week, it's not something we knew much about. I know, they, they do it twice a year, and ideally it's for customers who are gonna get their boat within the next 18 months. And they spend a week doing sail training, medical, electrical, what weather, else? safety, maneuvering. It's pretty comprehensive, and people come with no experience to you know just getting brush up. But mainly, it's about building the community within Outremer and with other Outremer owners. So it's pretty cool. Outremer provides resources to their customers while they're waiting for the mm -hmm. boats so that it's not just a, hey, good luck guys, but a lot of this stuff is maybe a little bit more geared towards entry level. Yeah. The safety at sea stuff, that's something we could really brush up on. Yes. All right, the group is gathered and we are headed out today to sail a Outremer 51 with Julian. We're in Le Grand Mott in southern France, where there's a special building code. There can't be any buildings that are shaped like rectangles. They have to be pyramid shaped. I think this one right here looks like a roller coaster. They're all delta shaped. I think that looks like Plinko from The <laughs> Price is Right. <laughs> That's it, that's it, that's it. It's looking good, $20,000. Come on down, Ryan. You have won. Bob Barker, come on down. down. It's the Plinko town. <laughs> uh, so we have a day for training. So um, I think we can share this day with two kind of maneuver. So habu maneuver and sailing maneuver. Sailing is definitely not rocket science. But these are big, complicated machines. There's a lot on the line, and the intimidation factor can be pretty big. Or at least it should be. Okay, this really, really sucks, and Nick is doing an awesome job. You guys come near 60? Holy sh I'll do my best not to be overly dramatic here. But cruising a small sailboat is not all fun and games. Oh yeah, some days can be fantastic. And the new friends, well, otherworldly. Not every day is a downwind sleigh ride. There are storms out there, and you gotta learn how to forecast them. And you got to learn the technology to route your boat safely. Yes, the destinations are amazing. But, and this is especially true of high performance catamarans, they can flip over. You got to know what you're doing. We learned so much on our last catamaran, Clarity. In fact, the learning is pretty much never stopped. Accidents, mistakes, near misses, almost disasters. We've been through a lot and learned along the way. 
And Clarity wasn't even our first boat. We had three boats before her. I know what you're saying. I thought we were talking about Outremer week here, Nick. Well, I'm setting the stage. See, with all us influencers out there, God, I hate that word. All us folks making pretty videos, we've seen a huge influx of people taking to the lifestyle. And we think that's fantastic. We couldn't be more encouraging. It's a wonderful thing. But a trend we've noticed are a lot of people buying huge boats with no previous ownership experience. Yes, there are good boats and there are better boats, but those who know, know that it's the crew that makes the boat safe. To the wind, come from north, this way, and our boat is here, like this. While a lot of this would be covered in a basic catamaran handling course like ASA 114. Nice. When you move back, you have to think about the rudder position, okay? Using fenders correctly and springing off of a dock. And you follow the, the traffic on starboard. And the side. rules of the road. It's super important to get the basic skills down because light boats like the Outremer, they're extra sensitive to crosswinds. And unlike most heavier charter cats, they've got dagger boards that need to be put down inside the marina to get extra handling. How was the docking? You did such a good job. How do you feel? Feels stressful. Yeah, but you feel like you learned a lot? I think I learned a, a, yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, you did great. This chair is pretty comfortable. Okay. When you come from a monohull and you go to a catamaran, is there problems you see frequently? Yep, most of the user when they come from monohull, they sometimes shit out too much the main, and uh, that's because we don't have a boom vane, so and we don't have backstay. So we, are, we need to keep the leech of the mainsail tight to keep the the mast on the raw on, on the right right position. Oh, otherwise, too much chafe. Yeah. Too much problems on the sail. Yeah. The and uh, yeah, and for the mast also is not good yeah. because the top of the mast is not is too much. Uh, uh, on the front, you don't. You need to keep tension on the leech of the mainsail. Uh, the headstay will yeah. bend and sag. Sag it means it's on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have, yeah. So you have to keep main sheet on to to keep the right uh, tension on on the front. A good instructor will also let you do dumb things, like hoisting a spinnaker sock to windward. Not a great idea. But again, these are great mistakes to make when you have light winds and lots of hands on deck to help you unfurl the sail. Learning that exact same lesson in heavy winds, especially on a light boat with shorthanded crew, could end in disaster. Another thing that's probably rather new for folks who haven't been on high performance boats is just how fast you gotta move sometimes. Okay, you can start pulling in, start pulling. Pull, pull, pull. Again, having a pro there to save the day sure makes a difference. Couple more outside jibes and Julian had the crew looking a lot better, even putting that wonderful little curl in the luff. Oops, that's a little too much curl. Uchermare week. How? We had no idea what was involved. I know, here we are. Beautiful out. It's pretty cool. If, if you've got an Uchermare on order, they help, uh, I guess, keep the momentum going. Is this a picture of you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it? All right. You want to film this? I don't want to film this, but we should probably document it. Let's go in the light. It looked like I got into a fight. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, uh,. Pretty sad. It looks worse on the camera as it does in person. Oh, great. Even better. So. 
I've been dealing with this really persistent minor skin issue kind of in my eyebrows, like kind of this dry skin rash. And I got a prescription for, for some medication back in the States and filled it here. And I've been using this cream and uh, well, I think it, I think I'm having a reaction to it. And so we're headed to a French doctor to see what he has to say about it. <laughs> All right, we couldn't find it. The address led us to some dumpsters behind a uh, restaurant, but a nice woman in the shop. She didn't speak any English. She we knew. Just this way. <laughs> she knew him, though, at least. Here we go, Gerard Mami. <gasps> Can you help us? Give us a little update. Oh, I'm a mess. <laughs> so out there you'll see an Outremer catamaran. We were anchored out there yesterday for lunch during the uh, sail training. And uh, evidently this medicine that I was putting on my, my eyebrows and in between my eyebrows and on my nose, evidently it really doesn't like the sun. And uh, that was a big mistake. You stayed in the shade pretty good, but I think it reflects up from everything. So. Yeah, you're getting nuked on the boats. Yeah. So anyway, I believe I've got some sort of histamine reaction happening. Anyway, we're going to live over here, but yeah. just keep your sunglasses on. <laughs> How will they know? Well, they won't know if I keep my sunglasses <laughs> on. It might be a little weird if you keep your sunglasses on in class. That's right, class. They offer in-depth classes about electronics, batteries, solar panels. This is stuff you gotta know as a cruiser. It's a relaxed, open forum where people can ask questions. And the medical class isn't just whiteboards and PowerPoints. They even let you practice suturing on pig's feet. So your name is? My name is Philippe Curtin. So tell me what you do here. Basic uh, first aid and medical course. At high sea, we will be in a remote condition. That we put an additional risk. So what I try here is to transfer knowledge, seafarers, to recognize a medical situation, be able to scale the severity, secure the victim in order to get medical advice or medical evacuation in the best way possible. All right, you never know what's going to happen. No, we're <laughs> on our, we're, <laughs> so we were taking a coffee break at the, one of these little things. Uh, the organizer comes up and says, oh, we'd like to introduce you tonight. <laughs> Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a play going on tonight. It's all about communication. We were a little confused about exactly what was going on here, but the Outremer crew gathered the crowd in an auditorium to run through some typical cruising scenarios. The setup for the skit was basically this. A married couple gets their brand new boat and they are so excited. They're preparing for their very first major ocean crossing. They decide to invite their really good friends who have zero sailing experience. Did I mention they're trying to get somewhere before Christmas? As we know, weather rules all and things don't go quite to plan. But it was how the owners handled things that got the crowd talking. Thankfully, there were a couple Nick spurts in the crowd. That's right, Nick O'Kelly and Nikki Henderson. I think she's trying to take my husband. Yeah, she's my wife in the skit. It's called acting. Well, as long as you don't kiss. <laughs> One, two, three, action! Oh, Sophia, I can't believe it. I'm just at the end of my watch. A new data has arrived. Mm -hmm. You've been watching the data as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see the change that's happened with the new model? Yeah, you know, I know that in my weather briefing, and it does look quite familiar, yeah. So we still have the wind angle that can get us mm -hmm. out of the way, but we must decide probably in the next few hours. If we wait, the fun will catch us. What do you think? 
Yeah, you know, I really trust you and I also really trust myself too. And um, gosh, this sucks because we're going to miss Christmas. But I did listen to all those calls. Oh, I did at Utrema. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I think, oh, damn, this is one of those decisions that they told us about. Yeah. Oh, guys, we miss Christmas. You said we miss Christmas? Yes, yes. Would you rather have uh, stockings? Full of love or stockings full of vomit? <laughs> this, uh, this is the choice we have. <laughs> We've been each watching the weather each day, and you've seen that we're just on the south side of each front that comes through. You've seen the wind shift. You reported with each one of your shift changes the changes with the weather. And it looks like, can you see? Mm -hmm. It looks like the front this time is much further south. Mm, not so clear for me. Uh, <laughs> do you remember that, guys? Do you remember those YouTube videos we watched? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember those YouTube videos with those really big waves and those people with those scared faces? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, that could be our story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if we go to the south, you remember those other YouTube videos <laughs> with the cold drink and the book of poetry <laughs> and the grapes, you know, all the things come out. Oh, darling, it's amazing. I YouTube videos. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe you should have shown them before for me yeah. because they're... I think, because I'm the captain, that my suggestion is we head further south and we avoid all the difficulties. What do you guys think? And uh, the friends? I mean, we yeah, have out. The friends are looking for us. Well, when we made our plans, we said you can, you can decide where to meet us or when to meet us. But you can't decide to meet us at one place at one time. And that's the discussion before we left. Do you know what, darling? I actually got. I, didn't, I bring, didn't I bring a turkey with me as well? So I was trying to explain what the freezer. This could be really fun, guys. This could be. Yes. This could be the best Christmas ever. Yes. <laughs> So the waves we're experiencing now are this big, and these here are that big. <laughs> I think. But, but, uh, I mean, we can to inform them and everything, and uh, for our flight ticket, ticket, could you? Oh. We have Starlink. <laughs> <laughs> I was super pooped out by my acting gig, but was really looking forward to checking out the Outremer factory. How much time does it take to build one single hull? Molding takes uh, one week. You can use different material to build, uh, to build the mold. We are using uh, polyester. Uh, you have gel coat on the outside. Mathieu was so generous with his time, and it was really cool to see behind the scenes. We talked about how they make the boats, the materials used. We went into a lot of great detail. So much detail that I think it makes sense just to put a full factory tour on the O'Kelly Tech channel. So check it out there. The attachment, it's, uh, it's glued with uh, a soft connection, which is a Sika Flex. It's never touching the structure. So the interior is floating in a way. Yeah, exactly. In suspension. So that's the secret. That's how the boats are so quiet. Yeah, all the furniture is, it's floating. I love the way Mathieu says it. It's in suspension. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. We're in the water. Everything's floating. <laughs> that was amazing, seeing Outremer Week. Now, Outremer Week is free to future owners. So if you've got a boat on order, you can come join them for, uh, it's one week in the spring and one week in the fall. Is that how it works? Once in the spring, once in the fall. And this is really just for future owners, which begs the question, why were we there? Now, a lot of the owners that were there were asking that question exactly. Which one are you getting? The 52 or the 55? If you saw our previous video about the 52, you could see that we're pretty enthralled with the boat. It looks fantastic. But 
Are we going to get a 52? Unfortunately, the timing just isn't going to work for us. We'd have to wait at least a year and a half. I mean, could you stand another <laughs> year and a half or two years of us, I don't know, couch surfing? Now we need to get a boat and that's priority number one right now. Yes, you can see my hair is very antsy for a boat. I think it, it is it time? Is it time to go back? I think it's time to start looking at flights. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned, everybody. We've got exciting things ahead. And yep, we do think we'll be back on the water soon. Thanks so much for spending your time with us. And extra special thanks, as always, to the patrons. Patrons making this happen. Yeah. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.